everybody, welcome back to California Carnivores. Today I wanna to talk about this wonderful situation here. So what you're all hoping for when you guys buy a B-52 is that someday you'll end up with something that looks amazing like this. So you start out with one in a pot like this, the rhizomes have been splitting and multiplying and turning to more every single year. And now it looks so great and you love showing it off and you love feeding it, but it needs something, it's getting so full um, and we don't want to mess it up at this point because we've already got it going so well. And I'm here to teach you what to do with something that's really overgrown and beautiful like this and how to make sure that we can repot it and have it still look beautiful. So I'm going to repot all these guys, bare root them and repot them into um, two pots like that. And we'll have a lot left over actually. So if you're doing this too, you'll have a lot left over. Maybe you can give them some friends, get them growing kind of plants. Anyways, first we're gonna start by um, washing all the soil off of this, and for that, we're gonna go over to the sink. So, now we gotta get this out of the pot. It's an old nursery trick, but usually if you squeeze it a few times on either side, it kind of gets set compacted and a little air in between there, so you can pull it on out. And then it's gonna, let's see if we can slide it out of here. We haven't tried before, so it might be hard. And don't worry about triggering traps, it's gonna happen. And I should say that we're doing this uh, now in February, which is an ideal time to repot the you know, slide traps because they've been dormant all winter. Believe it or not, this is dormant. It's so beautiful in spring and summer. It's not going to cooperate with the traps. There it is. The old nursery jiggle. And there it is. Um, we can see some rhizomes sticking out there and it's a lot of long roots. Big healthy plants like this can't get it. more roots. Um, Typical fly traps, but still probably not a lot of roots. We're really blessed here with good water, so I just use the hose water. As long as your water's not super high in minerals, you should be able to use it like this um, just for bare rooting. And I have the shower setting on this. If you do a jet, it'll come off faster, but it'll damage roots. So I like shower. And I'm kind of cradling it in my hand like that while I pull the soil off of this side. And in a second, I'm gonna change that up, slide over to the other side, and blast that off. And don't worry about the dirt. Getting your hands in dirt is actually really good for you like this. So your immune system. It's good for the soil. We may to be playing in the dirt. All right. So, now I've got most of the dirt off the edges. Let's just get the plastic. Okay, now we can see there's some really beautiful, big Venus flytrap rhizomes down in here. And I always talk about the rhizomes of, rhizo of uh, Venus flytraps looking like the loose base of celery, kind of. It's like celery if they had traps on top of them instead. And that is kind of like the bulb that stores the energy over the winter that these die back to. And you can see there are flowers coming and some new leaves just starting to grow. And that's why we know it's a really good time to transplant them. Watch your plants. You want to do it just as they're starting to grow. And then I'm gonna go ahead and kind of clean these all off. Take the top and kind of clean it like a brown usually. Pull off all that old brown leaves. And then just clean them all up. And then I'm gonna get them soaking in a container with a little bit of Super Thrive, just vitamin B, a couple of drops in there. Um, but I've got a lot of work to do. So let me speed this up and then we'll show you how to pot them up. Okay, so now I've got them all cleaned off and I've been left with this, um, exclusive Venus flytrap bouge salad. It's very expensive. Just kidding, don't eat them. Um, but look at all these Venus flytraps. Would you believe that a second ago that was all in this pot? If I tried to jam them in there, I don't think they'd all fit in this pot. So that's important. They're not all gonna go back into the pot we took them out of. We're gonna put them into two pots like this, and then we're gonna let them grow back out. The rest, honestly, will probably pot up, and you guys can buy them. It's good to have a little extra dirt on hand because when you start messing with this, you're going to find you might need a little bit more when it starts to compact. Um, apparently, compacting the soil is very controversial. But I've been doing it that way for 30 years. Other people might tell you why you shouldn't do things. I'm here to tell you 
you can do things. And this is how I do it. I've been doing it a long time. So I try to look for the biggest and best ones probably, you know. Let's take a quick look through. Oh, that one's huge. And you can see I'm kind of ginger with these things. Not rough, but ginger. I've got a lot of work to do. And so, and I've done this for a long time. And so much of plants is knowing what you can and can't do. I usually start with one side. The rhizome does have a direction. This is the back of the rhizome and that's the way it's growing. You probably don't want to put it like right up against the edge of the pot like that because it doesn't leave the plant anywhere to go. So probably want to give it about an inch from the edge of the pot. Take all those long roots, get them down in there. And I'm going to kind of hang the chops over that one side. And then I can take this side and close the hole up just like that. And it's pretty well in there. And I'll do one right next door. You can probably put these pretty tight. We're not going to put them back in as tight as they were, but we do want it to look really impressive this next year. That's just a really big clump. I think that's like two or three, but we'll put them back in all together. Just like that. And I can kind of push on this side. Kind of just lift these traps up. It's like underneath. You don't want to crush them down. There we go. Come back on this other side here. Always being pretty firm. You don't want it to settle down. And it will if you're not firm. There we go. Let's get another one right here. Get that nice big guy there. Again, kind of growing in towards the center. And there's no real order to this. You know, nature doesn't plant Venus fly traps in a row, and you did why. So I'm just gonna get them in there however they fit and let them fill back in. Quick, oh geez, that's a really big guy. And again, Venus flytraps have almost no roots. These are all the roots that that bulb was made in like, I don't know, eight years, very few roots. And you do want to, you don't want to crush them, but you can kind of fold them up in there a little bit or twist them in to get them all in there. They don't have to go straight down or anything necessarily. They probably like that, but roots know which way is down and they'll definitely find that. And I think I'll probably only fit maybe two more in here. Let's put this one right there. Which is good news for you guys, because that means there'll be lots of big B-52 Venus fly traps for sale in a couple of months. They always have nice ones, but these are really nice. Okay, I think I can squeeze one more in there. What do you think? It's very musicable. Okay. Down in there. And now you can see this can take a little trickiness. I'm going to kind of tuck it in in between these plants and use my bird fingers to push down in between. And kind of do that all over, settle it all down in. Okay. Actually, I think there might be room for a small one right there. So one more, why not? Make it be really full in the spring. And they can be really close together. Obviously, they're not going to be as close together as they were, because look how many we have left over. Okay. Voila. Just really quick. Once we get them in there, it's good with the shower setting again, just to kind of clean them off from above. And again, don't worry about those traps. Even these big ones are mostly from last year, so they're short-lived anyways. And if they're not, they'll open right back up again. I'm not going to show you the other one. It's going to be just like that. But that's a great pot for the spring to be super full and huge to show off to all your friends in the spring and summer. And we haven't messed it up. <laughs>